Hey guys, today we're going to run through a pretty quick, relatively cheap, and beginner friendly upgrade for your house. Most of you will have regular light switches all over your house. We're going to show you how to use a timed switch. So there's two basic styles. The first one that we're going to explain is a schedule style switch where you can program different times into it. The second one we're going to go through is a countdown timer style switch. This first one we're going to start with is a time switch for let's say an exterior light that you want to run at a specific time of day. For example, we like to have ours run in the evenings, let's say 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So instead of me running down here every day, flipping it on, and then running down every night right before I go to bed and flipping it off, you can buy a pretty handy dandy switch and it comes with a little clock and it will cut on and off at the same time every day if you program it that way. There's all different levels of complexity. There's cheap ones that are just basic, same time every day, more expensive fancy ones that will even track the cycles of the sun over the course of the year and turn on and off at sunset and sunrise. Um, you can even get ones that are uh, you know, GPS tracked, have backlights, all kinds of features. But it's a real neat feature and today we're going to show you how to install it. One thing you want to check before you even purchase your switch is to make sure that your switch box has a neutral wire. If your house was built later than around 2014 or so, then it'll be required by code here in the United States to have a neutral wire. If it's much older than that, then there's actually a good chance that it does not have a neutral wire. So it's good to open it up and if you see a bundle of white wires in the back, that's a pretty good chance that it does have a neutral wire. If not, then you may need to install that wiring, which is a much more intensive project. Before we remove this faceplate and start doing any work, it's a good idea to turn off the electricity to this circuit. You'll see that there are three wires connected to our old switch. One is the power coming in, the other one is the power going out, which can be flipped on and off, and then the one on the bottom there is the ground wire. So we're going to reuse all three of those wires as well as we're going to connect to this bundle of white wires you see over here on the side. This particular type of switch is a has the wires backstabbed into it, so those are kind of difficult to remove. I'm just going to go ahead and snip the wires here at the end and then I will remove some of that sheathing and polish those up so I'll get a good connection for the next switch. The painters oversprayed paint on the wires a little bit so I'm sanding off this copper wire to get a smooth connection. So follow your specific instructions for the wiring diagram of your schedule. For ours, it comes with a blue wire which can be used for a three-way switch. So I'm just going to put a cap on that since this is not a three-way style. I always like to do the ground wire as the first connection, so green is ground. And then I'll do white as the neutral connection. So I'll connect that to that bundle of white wires which wasn't previously connected to anything else. For our specific model, the black wire is the load coming in, so make sure to line that up with the power source coming in. And then red will be the power source going out, which is the actual output of this device. So I'll connect that to the other wire. Before I tuck all these wires back in, I like to carefully go flip the breaker back on and test it to make sure everything is functioning as I expected. And I didn't either make a mistake or have a loose wire, because tucking it in and pulling it out is the hardest part of the whole project. When placing the switch back into the box, it's important to be very careful with the way you fold those wires. Don't just shove them in because you could end up disconnecting something. So I try to fold them nice and neatly and tuck them into the back of the box as well as possible. Since this switch shape is different than the old switch, I had to get a new cover and I accidentally got a slightly smaller cover so you can see a little bit of that drywall cut out. So it's important to kind of look out for that sort of thing. I will just use this cover for now and get a bigger one down the road. The last step is to actually program your schedule. Make sure to follow the directions because there's normally several steps involved. The second type of timer has you know, a 10, 20, 30 minute timer on it. And what I really like hooking these up to is the bathroom vent. So especially if I'm gonna, let's say, take a shower first thing in the morning, I want it to run while I'm in the shower and then I want it to run for about 20 minutes after I get out of the shower. Now, if you have to leave right away, then you either have the choice of turning that vent off, at which point you have that humidity hanging around your bathroom for a couple hours, or you leave the fan on all day. Neither one of those is great options. If you leave the humidity in the bathroom, then that could lead to the drywall deteriorating, grout getting moldy, all kinds of things in your bathroom are starting to get funky. If you leave that fan on all day, 
then instead of it lasting 15, 20 years, that fan's probably only gonna last like four or five years. And it's pulling the air conditioned air right out of your house. And that's just gonna use up a little bit of electricity. So ideally you'd have it run for a little bit after you leave the bathroom and a switch like this makes that a no brainer. Installation of this switch is gonna be pretty much the exact same as the other one. There is not a blue for a three way wire for this particular model. A set of wire strippers is indispensable for electrical projects like this. Theoretically, you could get away with just a pair of pliers, but this has specific uh, cutouts for each wire gauge that when you strip those copper wires, you don't nick the copper itself, and they're only like 15 bucks. I recommend you pick a pair. Generally, these orange wire nuts are good for just connecting one of the appliance circuits to a main wire. The yellow wire nuts are one of the most common ones because they can hold up two or three wires. Um, you'll see that I'm wrapping the wires up first before I put the cap on and then you always want to wrap those wires clockwise so that the cap will tighten it on. In this junction box you'll see that we have a red wire nut. That is one of the larger ones because we have four wires going into it. Um, I'll post up a picture so that you can see which size wire nuts goes with which type of wire. Just to verify, we set on the one minute timer and measured it against the stopwatch and it was right on target. As you guys saw, this is a pretty simple project and it really upgraded our space. And it's very beginner friendly, especially if this is your first activity going into electrical. If you guys found this helpful, we'd really appreciate a like and subscribe and leave any comments if you have any of those for us. Thanks.